Welcome, ETH Denver. We are Cadena, layer one proof of work blockchain. And we want to talk to you about scaling EVM with parallel chains. Great. So um, a little bit about us. Uh, as John mentioned, we run a, a parallel chain uh, proof of work blockchain. And um, a little bit about me. Uh, my name's Stuart Popejoy. I'm a co-founder and the CEO. And uh, my re I've been in technology since the 90s. And my uh, relevant background here is I was a founding director of the JP Morgan Blockchain Center of Excellence. And my name is John Wigley. I'm chief technology officer at Cadena. I've actually been in engineering now for 36 years. And my team and I are responsible for the ChainWeb and PAC technologies that we'll be introducing. And prior to joining Cadena, I worked in blockchain at Definity on the internet computer. So we're going to talk about how we're taking uh, the technology we've developed at Cadena and how we're going to bring it to the EVM ecosystem. But to kind of set the stage, I want to talk a little about scaling, which is obviously a, con a topic that everybody's interested in. And just to get into it, and you know, and what are the What's the promise and what's the peril in terms of scaling EVM technologies? So first thing I wanted to do is that when John and I think about scaling, having been in this industry a long time, uh, been in tech a long time, we think of scaling very specifically as something where you have a resource that, you, that when you need to scale, you can throw more of that resource and there's no limit on how much of that resource you can throw at it. So for instance, you have a website, it, you know, you have a bunch, bunch of users coming in, you can throw more machines at it, you can throw more nodes at it, and there's no limit to that uh, in order to be able to accommodate your use case, right? If you, on the other hand, say you've got the world's fastest uh, single node machine, then it can go to whatever TPS. Once you hit that top TPS, you're not going to be able to go further unless you have something that you can then throw at it to handle the next kind of burst of uh, traffic or what have you. Um, so today, what we see with Ethereum, of course, is that we're using rollups and L2, uh, layer two and layer three technologies to scale. And the progress has really been tremendous. Um, we've got more blobs coming into, uh, in, into the Ethereum mainnet, and it's really been successful uh, enabling the Ethereum ecosystem to handle more traffic. Um, so there's a lot to like. But there have been some drawbacks. Um, and, and the main thing is with kind of decentralization and simplicity in the sense that I think the reason why a lot of us are attracted to working in blockchain tech is that the idea is that in, in some way it should be centralized and it should be simple uh, what you're trying to do or, how, or more specifically how you do it. So let's do a reality check. What, what is this scaling approach? Uh, what are some of the perils that we've encountered? And the first one is complexity and fragmentation. And that means that developers uh, and projects, when they want to build a dApp and scale a dApp, have to make a risky choice of uh, choosing amongst uh, diverse layer two uh, platforms or even run a layer two themselves, uh, run a validator network themselves. There's a lot of uh, complexity involved in scaling your app and potential fragmentation. The second problem that is, people are very aware of is that uh, is centralization has creeped in um, as people you know, want to get stuff out to market that actually delivers on the layer two and roll up promise. They have had to cut some corners with decentralization, with sequencers, et cetera. And uh, this has, you know, it's something Vitalik has talked about, and it's something that is, uh, it's regrettable. And, Worse, there's no kind of relief immediately in sight for how we're going to address the centralization issues. And then the last one is that decentralization is more than just a value. It's, it actually adds up to real world uh, problems such as censorship and fraud uh, when you have a small group of actors who might control a particular platform. So uh, I like to look at decentralization as actually a security guarantee. When things are decentralized, you're actually more secure. So what is the technology we've built to address these problems? Uh, we call it ChainWeb. So in ChainWeb, the expandable resource, if you could go to the next slide, please, is parallel chains. 
So we built this as a blockchain network that can grow with adoption and utilization pretty much forever without bound. Um, in our network, the expandable resource that Stuart was talking about is our parallel chains. This is, a, this is an environment in which there's no master chain, there's no hub, they're all equally independent of each other. And this is the only network of its kind right now in the blockchain landscape. Now these parallel chains are unique in that they act as an oracle of each other's history. We use a mathematical construct called an expander graph that allows each chain to operate fully in parallel, completely independently, yet after a certain block depth, they each see the fullness of each other's history. And that way, if an event occurs on chain A, chain B can validate a proof of occurrence by looking into its own history and seeing the history of chain A and being able to directly validate that proof. So this has the unique property that as chains are added, while efficiency and throughput increase, it actually becomes more resistant to attack. And this leverages the smooth divisibility of proof of work. I mentioned at the beginning that we're a proof of work layer one blockchain, and we chose that for its simplicity and some of the built-in security and decentralization guarantees we, go, we get with it. But it aids us as well in our parallel chain environment because as chains increase, and we're, we're able to increase them at any time, the divisibility of labor is also an advantage. The miners are now able to mine across a growing and growing pool of chains. So the hash rate distributes smoothly across all the chains, which eliminates miner competition and means that the energy utilization per transaction can actually go down as the TPS is going up. So some of the real world benefits of ChainWeb is that this has been running in operation, in production, without interruption for now five years. So this is not, a, this is not a, a, an idea or a promise of technology. This is technology that has been serving our community for quite a while now. Um, and it hasn't been a walk in the park. We have been attacked. We have had hash rate disruptions. But the benefits of proof of work have shown through every time. So this is a technology that's proven, and it's here today. In this environment, gas has stayed cheap, congestion has remained manageable, and it means you don't have to run any kind of node or validator network separate from the core consensus of the proof-of-work blockchain itself. The second technology piece to our uh, environment is, we call it PACT. It's both a smart contract language, but also a set of protocols. And what PACT does is it leverages this secure and effortless cross-chain environment that I told you built on the expander graph and allows us to design and deliver a parallel bridging protocol across these chains. This, allow, this allows scenarios, for example, where you can do true burn and mint. So I can transfer tokens from chain A to chain B where I am burning the tokens on A, minting on B, and achieving a complete zero sum for balances across all chains. And this is done effortlessly. You can think of it as a, as a kind of bridging in which no oracle is needed and no validator network is needed. It's an intrinsic built-in concept for our chains. This means that builders on our network do not have to worry about congestions or gas spikes. Now, a lot of networks that are new do have low gas fees, so we're not new in that respect. But as businesses know, when you build on any network, gas becomes expensive with utilization. So as your user base increases, as utilization of your app increases, even as external events on the network happen that have nothing to do with your app but represent a huge demand on the network, your business can suddenly face gas spikes that price your users out of your business model and we are able to provide an environment in which that does not happen. So, five years into this journey, we're now ready for the next step. Stuart. Thanks, John. So, we're here today to announce ChainWeb EVM. And uh, we're really excited to be at ETH Denver because, uh, you know, EVM is what everybody's using and it's the technology that we're all, you know, using every day and very excited about and, and want to succeed. Um, so, today the Cadena network runs 20 chains. We launched actually with 10, and then we forked to 20 chains, uh, doubling our throughput. So, later this year, we are going to once again double our chain count, but the new chains, 20 chains coming on, are going to be running fully standard EVM, Solidity, ABI, 
uh, that developers know and are used to and, are f and work seamlessly with all the existing great tools like Hard Hat, et cetera. Um, and uh, not only that, so that gets you EVM, which you know and, and is familiar to developers. But on top of that, we've also introduced a, we're introducing a, e uh, we're working on a draft EIP that brings the protocol that uh, John was describing for secure sharing of assets across these chains. Uh, the mint, and in the case of uh, specifically ERC-20, you have uh, the ability to mint burn uh, from one chain to the next. And the thing to understand there is that this is a unique scaling technology in blockchain because um, normally when you move things off of a chain and onto another chain, you have to uh, lock mint on the other chain and then release. And this is, a, this is a different technology where you actually maintain the same overall balance of coins over all of the chains. Uh, so this is something new for the EVM ecosystem, and indeed there is no architecture like, there's no parallel chain architecture like this outside of Cadena in blockchain today. So it's something that, uh, it's going to be a new experience for developers, and that's where the EIP is going to be very important, not to mention our experience uh, working with this protocol in PACT. Um, the other important thing to note is that this is not uh, vaporware, this is not a roadmap item, this is something that we are introducing a developer preview today that where you have, a, you have our chain web consensus running in a dev kit with two EVM chains so that you can deploy contracts right onto that and start testing out these parallel chain protocols yourself today. Um, so. We have a little demo for you. It's not a demo, it's a video because we're not crazy. Um, um, Stuart, before you go on to that, oh, yes. yep. one point I wanted to make really stress because you might hear the term parallel execution oh, yeah. from other, other uh, vendors. I want to distinguish this from parallel chains. So you can think of parallel execution just like threading on a single CPU where you're able to submit multiple jobs that could exist and run concurrently on the CPU, but the CPU at the, at the end still has to sequentially sequence the updates to memory that happen as a result of the work being done on these threads. In a parallel chain environment, that's more like having multiple CPUs that are all making their own updates to memory at the exact same time. So this is true parallelism rather than some sort of optimistic threading scenario. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, so let's take a look at this demo. Um, so uh, we had our UI team throw this together because it's, you know, it's pretty, it's not the most exciting thing to just th uh, show Bob sending coins to Alice on a different chain. So they, uh, they put together something that is basically something that shows, allows you to run the transfers and give you a block explorer in a uh, interesting uh, kind of throwback MP3 uh, skin. But this also shows you that all of our stuff works with all the latest JavaScript technologies. It's very easy to build apps, uh, leveraging all the great EVM technologies, and indeed, even easy to handle the multiple chains uh, in, the dev in the development environment that you're already very comfortable with. So what the demo shows, and you know, this is just a quick video to kind of give you an idea. We are actually running this. Uh, we'll have our booth running tomorrow uh, over in the booth area. And uh, that, this will be running on a laptop, so you can actually like dive in and look at the, the gritty details of how the burn mint. So this is an ERC20 burn mint protocol. You have Alice funded on chain A. You have Bob funded on chain B. Uh, and Alice sends coins from one uh, chain to the next. Bob sends it back. Um, and the, the important thing is that this is, this is very easy to do. This is not something, again, it is fully trustless. This is not something where you have to worry about getting wrecked in the middle of the transfer. And, and indeed, it's a fundamental protocol of our network such that the KDA token, which is the token that runs on our current network, will also be on these new chains such that the token moves around on those chains uh, with the burn mint and no tokens are, burnt, are created or destroyed in this bridging protocol. But you can use it for anything. You can use it for NFTs, you can use it, uh, you can share assets, any asset, anything you want across all chains, do broadcast, all that kind of stuff. So it's truly scalable and in a situation where all those 20 chains are uh, hitting their utilization limits, 
Then we, fork, we can fork to 50 chains, we can fork to 100 chains, we can fork to 1,000, 5,000 chains. There's actually no limit on how many chains we can fork to because, as John mentioned, the proof of work is smoothly divisible to essentially an infinite amount of chains. At some point, of course, bandwidth and some other considerations start to come into play, but we're way away from that, time, from that moment. So how does this impact you? Um, one of the important things I've mentioned a few times is avoiding these gas spikes and not having to fight to get into a block. This isn't just about keeping gas prices low. This is about keeping them predictable and manageable within your business plan. You also don't need to run your own app chain. And what I mean by that is one of our core principles is to restore the simplicity of blockchain. Blockchain has a lot of promises in it that, of course, as a maturing environment, we've realized certain stumbling blocks, certain diff difficulties related to scaling, which have brought up a whole bunch of subsidiary and external technologies to try and mitigate these difficulties. We think they can still be solved within the regime of blockchain itself. These are also mature tools you now have available for scaling. Not just on the Ethereum side, where you can use Hardhat, you can use Block Scout, you can use all the tools you're familiar with to work with our EVM chains, but you also have our mature tooling, the five years of experience we've had building these bridging protocols and developing the packed environment. Yeah, and a little more color on that. Uh, we, not just experience building these things, but working with builders. So one of the most uh, successful apps in our current ecosystem is a D-PIN uh, protocol that they didn't really think about, you know, they're in the single chain mentality, which is understandable because that's how pretty much every blockchain uh, presents uh, the compute environment to you. Um, and so they were on a single chain and indeed they were getting to the point where there was congestion and uh, gas prices were starting to go up. So we worked closely with them to help them scale the app onto multiple chains. So, because it's a little different for every app and there's many things you can do. There's things you can do with uh, optimistic protocols for instantaneous liquidity across chains. These are all protocols we have. So if you have an idea, you should come talk to us because there, there are ways that this scaling can benefit you that aren't immediately apparent. So how can devs get involved? So there's a couple of things I wanted to point out. One is that this is a blank slate for builders. Since we're introducing this today, really, this is an, an ecosystem and an environment where there's not a lot of competition yet for building out big DEXs or big applications in the space. So developers coming in have a first mover opportunity to get started before the, uh, before the space gets crowded. It's also very easy for you to port and deploy an existing EVM app into our chains. I myself, I tried it with Uniswap v2 and v3. In an afternoon, I was able to get both running on our chains. Um, we also have an early access EVM developer community, and there's going to be some giveaway opportunities there. If you join us on our Telegram, we'll have a QR code in a moment that'll show you how to get there. And you can come meet us at our booth tomorrow. Uh, we'll, we'll have several of our team there, our DevRel uh, representatives and some of our devs, where we can talk more about how you might be able to use this technology for your own applications. And we're also doing some uh, giveaways, uh, $500, uh, $500 giveaways for uh, joining our Telegram group or participating in an ide ideation process. But the biggest news is a $50 million grant program. So we're putting money behind bringing people, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> putting money where our mouth is. Uh, and again, so if you have an idea about an app that, you wanna, that you've got running on EVM, but you're, you're running into scaling issues, come talk to us because we really want you to check out what we have and we're here to help. And uh, money always helps with that. So, you know, come on over. So that's it. We're at uh, Booth 425. That's tomorrow. And uh, we're really excited to meet all of you, show you the demo that we just were demonstrating here, and answer any questions you might have. I don't know if we've got 41 seconds yet. I <laughs> might have time for a question. I don't know. Oh, no. Getting the... If you have questions, keep them. Bring them tomorrow. Happy to answer. Thank you so much. Thank you.